Nearly 50,000 boats and vessels lock through the Hiram M. Chittenden locks in Ballard every year, and some of the most exciting to see are those coming and going to and from Alaska. It's amazing how much of the Alaskan fishing fleet comes through the locks to spend winters here at Fisherman's Terminal. I'm Katie McGilvery and I work for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We built the locks in the Lake Washington Ship Canal a hundred years ago and we still run them today. For our centennial, we teamed up with a lot of local folks to tell stories about our history and our impact on Seattle in a series of short films. The following episode is about Fisherman's Terminal and the fishing boats that come through the locks all year long. Well, I got to tell you, as a 20-year Ballard resident, the sense of place this place has given me is really uh, something that I really treasure. And the fact that it's still a functioning waterfront, yeah. it gives us all encouragement that maybe we're doing something right. During my frequent commutes between my home in Ballard and my job at the Port of Seattle, I have the honor and pleasure of crossing the Ballard Bridge and looking at the fishing fleet as a reminder of the significance this area has and indebtedness to the fishing industry. Fisherman's Terminal, Ballard Locks, and the town of Ballard are all inextricably linked. They were all basically formed at the same time and create the working waterfront that we need to conserve for the economic benefit of the entire region. Fisherman's Terminal is one of the facilities operated by the Port of Seattle, and the Port of Seattle is a public agency formed by the voters of King County in 1911, and its mission is economic development and the operation of facilities such as Fisherman's Terminal, the harbor on Elliott Bay, or the SeaTac Airport. The Ballard Locks are named for Hiram Chittenden, and so most people are very aware of his connection with the locks and the ship canal but not a lot of people know that he also was very instrumental in the establishment of Fisherman's Terminal. He was one of the first port commissioners and he led the effort to get Fisherman's Terminal established. So Fisherman's Terminal got started because Elliott Bay was quickly filling up. The, um, there were not many places for small boats to moor. And so Miller Freeman, who is the publisher of Pacific Fisherman Magazine, suggested to the newly formed port that they should establish a terminal for fishermen. They called it Fisherman's Headquarters. The idea was not just to have docks, but to have all the associated facilities that are needed for the fishing fleet. Fisherman's Terminal was dedicated or opened in January 1914. And the reason I have a particular personal interest in this, our family had a series of photographs that were taken on the occasion of that event. And I learned later that uh, my grandfather was very involved as a member of a group of local fishermen who lobbied the Port of Seattle to create a terminal for the Seattle fishing fleet. And so on that opening day, they had a parade of 200 boats, including the fishing fleet out of Tacoma. And my grandfather's boat, the Inga, was the lead boat. It led this parade and into the terminal. This was a huge event to the fishermen. Fisherman's Terminal opened before the locks were built. Once the locks did close and the water rose behind them in 1916, Salmon Bay was raised to the level of Lake Union and the fresh water displaced the salt water and that created a number of conditions that made Fisherman's Terminal useful for a wide variety of ships and a lot more ships were able to fit in. We have a remarkable fleet of boats that home port here in Seattle at uh, Fisherman's Terminal this beautiful fleet of wooden halibut schooners that have been fishing for a century and many generations. And one reason they've lasted so long is, has to do with the locks and, and the fresh water and the salt water, being able to moor these boats in fresh water. Fresh water is a tremendous advantage over salt water because that prevented uh, marine growth, such as barnacles and seaweed growing on the boat, and also prevented any boring worms because they don't live in fresh water. So that's what's added to longevity of the fleet you see here. I started fishing with my father, who bought, who bought in this boat in 1960. It was an old boat when he bought into it. And this was, you know, the family farm. I went and worked on the family farm. The Vanceville was built in 1913. It's a traditional halibut schooner that was built for dory fishing. It has consistently fished for halibut since the day it was built. It has never missed a season, and it continues to be an active and very productive boat in the long line halibut and sablefish fishery. 
Vancy and all the similar vessels around here started using the locks shortly after they were built. And a large portion of the fleet that fish in Alaska are home ported here because the climate is a little more conducive to getting work done here than it is, say, in Alaska, and because of the goods and services that are available here. Once the moorage was in place, it attracted businesses that support the fishing industry, and one of those would be the Vessel Owners Marine Ways, which was formed in 1917 as a group of boat owners got together, and so they formed something of a cooperative shipyard. It's still in business. They can do an amazing array of work there. So Leif, uh, we got a boat that's just about 100 years old and a shipyard that's about 100 years old coming out of a ship canal that is about 100 years old. And there's a lot of things that are 100 years old that aren't looking so good. Um, I guess what you do here is part of the reason they're still around. That's right, yeah. That's, uh, companies maintain most of these boats their whole lives. As you're driving across the Ballard Bridge and you look down into the Fisherman's Terminal, you might not realize that you're looking at the Alaska fishing fleet. You're looking at the boats that go up, they go through the locks and out to sea, and they travel all the way to the North Pacific. And they capture the salmon and the crab that this region is famous for. And it's amazing to look at those boats and realize that they're responsible for about half of the American seafood catch. And there's thousands of jobs that depend upon the work of those boats. These are good, solid, middle-class jobs. And the impact on the overall vitality of Seattle's economy is really important. One of the things I'm struck by when I come to Fisherman's Terminal is that it's not just a business. It's a very deeply connected community. And Seattle is their home port. It's the place where they come back together. And so you have things like the memorial. It's a beautiful statue of a fisherman at sea bringing in a fish. And on the plaques surrounding it are the names of those who lost their lives at sea, including my father. That has become such a hugely important place for families. You go there at any time of the year and you will see flowers and pictures because there are no places, there are no graves for, for those families to go to. This is the place where they go to memorialize their family. Today, Fisherman's Terminal is still a thriving center of activity for the Northwest Fishing Fleet. Frequently, I like to take my grandchildren down there because you can see and, and relate to them some stories of the past because they're still doing the same things that they did in the 1940s and 50s. You see the fishermen out there repairing their nets, and uh, I can remember seeing that as a little kid myself. These vessels are, really represent entire family enterprises. These are not big corporate entities. These are people who have chosen a lifestyle that's very different than going to the office and they have, as a result, a tremendous love and respect for the sea. And that connectivity to the marine environment is something that is critical and something that we are uh, in jeopardy of losing if we don't realize the importance of the health of the ocean to the health of our businesses and community. As I walked around the terminal with the port commissioner, I was thinking that I think there's a tendency to see this as a vestige of the past, and, but instead it's just this incredibly vital place. And Fisherman's Terminal is one of the great examples of how people have taken this asset that the city has and grown it into something that is important in generations of families. And it's made a way of life possible that we wouldn't have otherwise if we didn't have the ship now.